Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Now, tonight's picture is a mystery, and it is a very non-traditional noir. It's from 1953, Man in the Attic, starring Jack Palance, Constance Smith, Byron Palmer, and Francis Bavier. And its plotline is very simple. It is a fictionalized drama of the Jack the Ripper killings. And I say this is a non-traditional noir because, believe it or not, not all noirs were set contemporary to the 1940s and 50s. There were a handful of noirs that were done as westerns. Others were done as period films, uh, like tonight's picture being set in 1888 London during the time of the Jack the Ripper killings. So I guess the way to say this is the word noir is, it defines a style of film. Uh, most of that lying in its cinematography, you know, using very dark scenes in very low light with high contrast and uh, mostly filmed at night and preferably along city streets. Now, there are other elements that can define a noir as well. Things like lots of plot twists and also the protagonist getting it and falling in the end. You know, the good guy doesn't always win. Now, this picture is actually a remake of The Lodger from 1944. Uh, both films were released from 20th Century Fox. And tonight's picture uses a lot of the same sets, reuses the same musical score, and in some instances, even reusing some of the same film footage. Although most of that footage lies toward the end of this picture. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the same things were taken from The Lodger. And I just thought this would be a fun film to you, uh, to, to bring to you because, yeah, not all noirs were set during the 1940s and 50s. So, from 1953, Man in the Attic. Let's roll the picture.
You clatter like a horse. You'll not steal up on any jack rip or thunder into the streets like that. Three thousand men called out, all wearing rubber strips on their boots, except the Yorkshire man. And one Yorkshireman's worth a lot of you, never mind me boots. They'd be better off giving us guns, not yawping about rubber soles. And what do we do with this? Against a cunning devil with a long, sharp knife. An Irishman knows what to do with that. You go now, Katie. Now go home and don't come back here till you learn how to behave yourself. I won't go home. Now, I've warned you, Katie, a hundred times if I said it once. Let go of me. I'll go when I'm ready and not before. Let go of it! No, now, is that any way to be acting? Now, just gentle-like. Easy and gentle, if you please. Three strong men it takes. Three men! To keep one poor woman from having a little drink. No, no, you'll be feeling fine after a little sleep. Come on. I'm feeling fine now, you great ape. <laughs> you got a quick eye, miss. He is a bit like an ape. Here, you for home. You've had enough. Now, look here. I will drink till I float if I want to, and no one is going to stop me. I might Yeah, have... let me handle this. You see, miss, it's our duty to protect you from Jack the Ripper. I don't think you mind a bit of protection from a fiend like that, do you? You know, I will be honored to have a stalwart and polite constable such as you take me home. I live just around the corner. Just around the corner. to find a constable with such lovely manners. Yorkshire gallantry, ma'am. Well, here it is. And, and, and thank you kindly. A pleasure, ma'am. Sleep well. Thank you. Good night. Good night. This fellow, George Bernard Shaw, should be shipped back to Ireland post-haste. What did you say, dear? I was talking to the dog. About what, dear? I said George Bernard Shaw should be sent back to Ireland. Why, what did he say that you don't like? He said if a duchess went down to Whitechapel and got slaughtered by Jack the Ripper, something would be done to protect the lives of the poor women who live there. Well, it's true, isn't it? In the first place, it's not true. In the second, I was talking to my dog. 
Very well, but I think at least you should tell him both sides. That's ridiculous. Now, who could that be this time of night? I'm sure if you think carefully, you will discover a way of finding out. William? I feel something. Helen. Well, I do. Good evening. Do you have rooms to let? I saw your advertisement and the estate agents gave me this order to view. You must forgive me for coming so late. I was working. Oh, yes, of course. We do have rooms. Please come in. I'm Mrs. Harley. My name is Slade. Well, Helen, who is it? My husband, Mr. Harley. This is Mr. Slade, dear. He's come to see the rooms. Yes, how do you do? That's odd, you know. He never does that with strangers. May I see the rooms, Mrs. Harley? Oh, yes, of course, Mr. Slade. You can just come upstairs. I dusted in here today. I had a feeling someone might come. I'm sure you'd be very comfortable here. This is the bedroom. These are the only rooms you have, Mrs. Harley? I could let you have them quite reasonably. There isn't anything else, except the attic, of course. The attic? Please let me see it. It's really very small, you know. I would like very much to see it. Do you like those? They're old-time actresses. Quaint, aren't they? As you see, it isn't very nice. Excellent. This is excellent. Exactly what I need, madam, you see. I am a pathologist. I need a place to study and do a little experimental work where I won't be interrupted. Oh, I'd take the other rooms as well, of course. I would live downstairs and work up here. Would that be all right with you? Yes, of course. This will be most useful. I suppose a scientist's experiments always seem mysterious to other people. I assure you, I won't be doing anything dangerous. <laughs> That's good. May I take the rooms tonight? Yes, uh, but the term... Would five pounds a month be acceptable? Hi, oh, well, well, that's more than adequate. Done. You're our first paying guest, Mr. Slade. You see, we've come upon a period of hard times. So you must now let rooms. Yes, Mr. Harley suffered business reverses. And with nothing to do, he's become so nervous and restless. If at times he seems a little eccentric or rude... You will understand, won't you? Of course I will. I believe I should pay you now, Mrs. Harley. My habits are irregular, I'm afraid. I often need to be out late at night. But I will be very quiet. If you'll just regard me as a lodger, not as a guest, you'll... you'll hardly know I'm in the house. A month in advance. Oh, you are thoughtful, Mr. Slade. I'm so pleased it was you who came. Are you? That's very kind. The maid will get your meals whenever you want them. You have a maid? Yes. This happens to be her night out. But I can get you some dinner if you'd like. Yes. This is a beautiful old Bible. Yes, it belonged to my grandmother. I hope you'll not take it away. I should like to have it here. It comforts me. Another one. Another one of those horrible Jack the Ripper murders. Why can't the police stop them? Jack the Ripper. What a revolting, stupid name. I'm 
sorry, Mrs. Harley. The, the whole thing is repugnant to me. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll get your dinner now. Murder! Evening Standard! Echo! The Ripper again! You. Are you heard? Yes, another murder. The fourth, all the same. He cuts their throats and then uses his knife like a doctor who's gone mad. The papers daren't print all the details. Too gruesome. Want to read it? Uh, no, thank you. William, Mr. Slade took the room. Mm -hmm. And the attic, too. He's taking them as of now. I say, that's a bit quick, isn't it? He won't be any trouble to us at all. Don't like renting out bits and... Pieces of my own home. Can't have any privacy. Besides, we need the money. I suppose you want me to go up and make a show of hospitality? No, tomorrow will do, dear. But if you're finished with the paper, let me take it up to Mr. Slade with his dinner. Finished with it? I just got it. There, you see. It's beginning... Well, now, where's that dog? I think I saw him go upstairs. Look, that fellow's not going to have my dog, too, is he? These pictures, their eyes follow you wherever you move. They watch. They get on my nerves. I don't like being watched. I understand. I'll have them taken down tomorrow. Further, they are pictures of actresses. Oh, yes. I hope you don't really object to actresses. My niece Lily's on the stage. Your niece? Yes, we're very proud of her. She opens next week at the Piccadilly Theatre Royal. She's bringing over some special dances from Paris. They're quite shocking, but they're most delightful. And she is very beautiful, too, I suppose. Oh, yes. Wait till you meet her. Meet her? Yes, she'll live here in this house. Oh, you'll soon change your mind about actresses, Mr. Slade. Come on, Prince. Helen, it's seven o'clock. Be quiet, dear. Read your paper. We're just coming. Oh, I'm as good as my word, Daisy. I've got your pass for Miss Liz's performance tonight. Oh, Mr. Arliss, sir, you're awfully nice. What's the matter? Don't you want to go now? Oh, I do, sir, I do. But I'm afraid. Afraid? Well, there ain't a girl in all London who fancies walking home alone at night. What with the ripper up to his devilish tricks? Well, I suppose I don't blame you. Tell you what. <clears throat> See the show and come home in a cab. Oh, bless you, Mr. Hollis, sir. Now, run along and fetch us the carriage, will you? Yes, Mr. Hollis, sir. <laughs> Come along, Lily, darling, or you'll be late. I'm coming, Auntie. Uncle William, you look very handsome and elegant. You look pretty ravishing yourself. Oh, I'm so excited, I'm afraid I'm going to burst. You must contain yourself at all costs, especially in the theater where people are helplessly packed together. <laughs> oh, do be quiet. Be sure you've got everything. Hello there, Mr. Slade. Are you coming to the theater, Mr. Slade? I'm afraid not. Oh, Lily, I don't believe you've met Mr. Slade, have you? My niece, Lily Bonner. Good evening, Mr. Slade. I'm sorry you can't come to the opening. I have work I must do. You work at night? Yes, quite often, sometimes all night. It's quieter at night. I like the night, too. It's the only time I feel really alive. It's at night that the interesting things happen. What kind of work do you do at night, Mr. Slade? I doubt if you'd be interested. Do you just work? Sometimes I walk close by the river. The river is like liquid night flowing peacefully out to infinity. 
I must not delay you. I, I wish you success tonight. I thank you. Good night. Good night. He's so odd, isn't he? I believe he's shy and lonely and all wrapped up in his Chinese puzzles. What Chinese puzzles? Oh, science and pathology, whatever you said he did. I can't help feeling there's something odd about him. He skulks, he prowls, that's the something about him. And if he's lonely, he has only to pop out of his shell and speak to someone. I think he's interesting. Evening Standard! Echo! Evening Standard! Echo! 4,000 police on duty in Whitechapel! Evening Standard! Echo! 4,000 police on duty in Whitechapel! Oh, thank you, Governor. Evening Standard. Echo. Dressing room one. Hello, Annie. Flowers for Miss Bonner. Please. May I see Miss Bonner? Miss Bonner is dressing. Who is it, Leela? It's Annie Rowley. La Belle Anne, remember? It's all right, Leela. I know who Annie Raleigh is. Come in. Oh, it looks very nice. Thank you for letting me come in. I always like to come and say hello to my old dressing room. Perfectly all right, Annie. Help yourself to champagne. Courtesy of the management. Oh. I've got to hurry. <laughs> yes, I remember. Did you know royalty was coming tonight? Yes, the Prince of Wales. Oh, I had it all once. Royalty, champagne, flowers. I remember my opening night and how excited I was. I looked in this very mirror. I wish I knew then what I know now. I came up overnight. Overnight it was forgotten. Won't be that way with you. Who knows? No, it won't. I went on looks alone. You have talent and all the rest. Thanks, Annie. Coming tonight? No, I have what I call my work. I still sing and dance, you know. Oh, where? La Belle Anne now performs at Madame Tussie's School of the Dance. Gentlemen come in the evening to learn the latest fandango. That's in the parlor in front of the house. Is there anything I can do, Annie? Too late. You know, Annie, perhaps it isn't all up with you. Perhaps I could help you. I don't think there's a place with my girls, but I'm sure I could do something. She's gone, Miss Lily. Yes. Just wink your eye and sigh, sigh. 
and whisper, Vive l'amour. Say, je t'aime, say la même, say, je vous adore. And then gay Paris will very plainly see that you're in love. Did you see that? The little minx floated with the Prince of Wales. Shh. Je vous adore And then gay Paris Will very plainly see That you're in It was the Ripper again. The report said it was a murder, just like the others, sir. Where was it? Whitechapel? Yes, sir. All right. To Lily Bonner and her beautiful, talented troupe, Long Life. Oh. London is yours, Lily. And if I were Lord Mayor, I'd give you the keys to the city. <laughs> <laughs> You know, champagne has a special significance to me. As I was growing up in the old Limehouse district, champagne was only a remote word. She is very beautiful, this day, if I may say so, sir. Mm-hmm. Wait here, Bates. It's It's like very much interrupting your party, Miss Barner. It's a matter of utmost importance to Scotland Yard. Sounds fascinating, Inspector uh, Warwick. And how can I help Scotland Yard? I want to ask you about a woman who came to see you before your performance this evening. A certain Annie Rowley. Yes, she was here. I felt terribly sorry for her. How much do you know about her? Not much, I'm afraid. Why, Inspector? She has become another victim of Jack the Ripper. Can you tell me if she was with anyone? No. She was alone. Someone said a man was seen near the place where Annie Rowley was found. A man carrying a small black bag and wearing an ulster. Of course, that description fits thousands of people, but... You saw no such man? No. No, I saw no one like that. Finally got Lily settled for the night. Poor thing, she thought she was so excited she couldn't sleep. But she dropped off while I was talking to her. That's possible. I just opened it. I'm thinking. Thinking. You know that man from Scotland Yard said the Ripper was carrying a little black bag. All he said was there was a report that a man carrying a black bag was seen in the vicinity of the murder. And Mr. Slade came to us the night of the other murder, and all he had with him was a little black bag. And tonight, 
He took his black bag with him when he went out. He did not. Yes, he did. His bag is not black, and he didn't take it with him tonight. William, he did. Would you stake your oath on that? Your solemn oath in the court of law? So, you're not sure of the color of his bag, nor that he had it with him when he went out. You're always leaping to illogical conclusions, which you call thinking. And the window? Oh, I'm sorry, dear, I forgot. Women can sense things, William. Now, you know that's true. Remember when I said something had happened to my sister Sophie and we found out that she'd fallen and broken her hip? And remember... What are you looking at? It's Mr. Slade. He's just coming in. Why not? He lives here. he creeps. It's three o'clock in the morning. Do you think he should come in dancing and singing and waking up the whole house? He stopped to close his door. He did? The window? Oh. More tea, dear? Hmm. Paper says that the murderer used his knife in ways quite unprintable. Ridiculous. How can a knife be used unprintably? Tea, dear? Hmm. Queen Victoria has issued a statement. She has told Commissioner Warren that no married man could possibly be to blame for these murders, and therefore every bachelor in London should be rounded up immediately. Tea? Well, what a wise queen. Now all Scotland Yard has to do is to round up a million men and ask them if they are Jack the Ripper. Well, she's right. No married man would do such a thing. Oh, she's so gay. Even in the morning. Good morning. Isn't it a beautiful world? All the reviews are raised. Why, of course. Don't say it. Don't say what, dear? I wonder who that can be. <laughs> oh. I'll go, Daisy. Hello, I'm Paul Wardick of Scotland Yard again. Oh, oh, yes. Do come in. Good morning, Mr. Warwick. Hello, Miss Barner. I'm sorry to bother you so early in the morning, but it was important that I talk to you again. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, do come in and have a cup of tea. Thank I'll you. I'll get it, dear. Did you know I found out last night after you left that any Rowley sent me some flowers? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, that was my excuse. I mean, reason for calling. The stage doorman told me. I'd like to find out what florist the flowers came from. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't keep the box. Well, it was a possible lead. Though it did no help to Scotland Yard, it did give me the opportunity... Good morning. Of... I beg your pardon. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, Mr. Slade, this is Mr. Warwick. How do you do? Mr. Warwick's from Scotland Yard. He's engaged on the Ripper case. Now, tell me, Inspector... Is it really true that this time the Ripper was seen? Yes, I was about to ask that, too. He may have been. I don't think you'll ever catch him. Why not? Well, five murders. This time, Whitechapel was swarming with police. And yet you didn't even come near to finding him. You don't know any more now than you did in the beginning. Yes, we do. Oh, what? He's of average height, he's very quick and strong, and he's left-handed. Perhaps he carries a black bag which would contain his knives. What I want to know is, why does he do it? Well, there are many theories. The favorite one is that he's a maniac who kills at random. Do you believe that? No. Oh. Well, he may not kill at random, but he's not sane. Uh, you're a medical man, Mr. Slade. Would you say he was sane? I tend to agree with Miss Lilly. The police will not find him. Why not? The police are searching for a criminal. 
In reality, there are no criminals. There are only people doing what they must do because they are who they are. So perhaps the police are searching for someone who doesn't exist. Well, if my theories are correct, I shall make Jack the Ripper's own hands tie the noose that will hang him. I still don't see how you worked it out that he was left-handed. Uh, do you, Mr. Slade? I've intruded too long. I really only came down for the morning paper. Thank you. Have you all finished with it? Oh, yes, sorry. Should have sent one up to you. Thank you. Excuse me. Odd how that dog acts. Seems to have fallen in love with him. Mr. Slade? Mr. Slade, is something burning? Don't come up here. I'm sorry there's an odor, Mrs. Harley. There was something I had to burn my work. I'll open the window. Just leave the tray in my sitting room, please. Darling, if you could have that dress mended by tonight. I'll try, Miss Lily. You were so good in the show, you know. I don't think it off matters what you wear on the stage. It does, Daisy. And so does what I don't wear. I shall be at the uh, hairdressers most of the time. Yes, Miss Lily. Good afternoon. You're going out early? Yes. I've just completed an experiment. I, I, I must test it. And when you've tested and improved it, what would you know, Mr. Slade? A little more about life and death. I wonder what else you need to know about life except that it's wonderfully worth living. And of death? What is there to find out except that it's the end of life? <laughs> that is a philosophy for a young and beautiful woman who is the toast of London. Thank you. Which way are you going? Your way, Miss Bonner. Isn't that what your enraptured young men would say? I think they might. What do you say, Mr. Slade? I am going to work. Oh, where's that? Everyone is so curious about me. Very well. I am going to the university hospital where there are laboratory facilities that I use. I may not come home until late and then your charming aunt will become suspicious. Soon, because I am not like everyone else, you will ask me to leave. I've had it all before. Poor Mr. Slade. Walk with me to the cab across the square. She won't ask you to leave, Mr. Slade. If she did, we'd all object. Would you? Of course. I'm afraid you've been alone too much. That makes one quite broody, you know. I am broody? A little. And when you're like that, you miss things. There's so much delight in the world, the, the whole sky with the sure sun on it, the sound of laughter and of music, the sweet enjoyment of a man's kiss. Do I shock you, Mr. Slade? You are an astonishing woman, Miss Bonner. Oh, dear. I don't know what to do. Oh, where is William? Why doesn't he come home? 
Oh, what is it, Mrs. Harley? What is it? Never mind, Daisy. I can't tell you now. I must see Mr. Harley first. Oh, Lily is walking with him. Lily's walking with that man. What man? Why, it's only Mr. Slade she's with. Daisy, Mr. Slade is the ripper. <gasps> William, thank heaven you're home. You must stop them. What are you getting at? Don't let her go off with that man. Helen, you've been nipping at the sherry again. Oh, please. William, Mr. Slade is the ripper. Mr. Slade is the ripper. Look at that. What is it? The other morning when I took him his breakfast, I smelled something burning. He said it was his experiment. It was his black bag. He burned his bag, William, right after he found out the police were looking for a man with a bag. I see. Well, is that all you can say? Very sensible of him. What? I said very sensible of him. Nobody can afford to own a bag like that now. Come here. A man was mobbed this morning in Trafalgar Square. They nearly tore him to pieces. Why? Because he was carrying a little black bag. This is my black bag. I didn't burn it because I didn't think of it. I just hid it in here. Anyone who owns such a bag is under suspicion. The whole city has become hysterical. People are flocking to the police to inform their neighbors. Do we have to have this nonsense in our own home? If Slade wanted to be rid of his bag, he wouldn't leave that around for you to find. The man isn't a fool. Oh. You're just a little overwrought, that's all, old girl. How about a spot of sherry? I think you better have one too, Daisy. Oh, I don't mind if I do, sir. I rather wish we could talk again sometime. You've done something good for me. And perhaps you will have tea with me. Tomorrow? I'd be delighted. Thank you, Miss Bonner. Hello, Chief. We're in trouble. A meeting is being called. The High Commissioner resigned this morning and Her Majesty accepted. Resigned? Too much pressure on the Ripper case. I could find a fingerprint. Fingerprints? That won't help. I know that theory. No two prints are like it. It's nonsense. Oh, we'll have to do better than that, Paul, or we'll have no jobs. Perhaps you could put aside your social life and help us do something about the Ripper, eh? Yes, sir. you stop? If I must choose between music and you, I, I will choose you. <laughs> More tea. Yes, thank you. Do you enjoy Robert Browning's poetry? Sometimes. Depends on my mood. I read this author or that one as I feel like it. I like to pretend that it was all written for me. Perhaps it was. Every so often, a woman lives for whom men do all things. I'm only a woman like any other. Not like any other. You don't know, Miss Bonner, about the others. Are you saying that you like me? Miss Bonner, it, it has done me great good to know you. It has? How? Oh, I, I'm afraid it's a long and a very personal story, and I should dislike troubling you with it. I already know. You are a man very much alone. And you need to find those who will love you. And when you do, you won't be lonely anymore. 
those who will love me. Is it really true that you dislike actresses? You seem to have touched on an old wound. I'm sorry. No. Yes. I will tell you. My mother was an actress. She was one of the most angelically beautiful women who ever lived. Exquisitely graceful, talented, and captivating. I loved her deeply. Deeply. She had the face of heaven. And the wretched heart of Jezebel. For every aspect of beauty she possessed, she contained a double portion of evil. I hated her. But I thought you said you loved her. One can love the beauty and hate the evil. Didn't you know that, Miss Bonner? Come. I will show you. I didn't mean to do this, but now I've begun, I will finish. I will show you this face, and you will see for yourself that there was no way for my poor father to know that she was cunning and faithless and rotten. It's not difficult to understand that my father fell in love with her. Perhaps she never met a man she didn't entice. She knew no love, only lust. She betrayed my father a hundred times, and when she finally left him for a young, rich Frenchman, my father killed himself. Not with a gun, with absinthe. With a thousand green glasses of absinthe. All of my growing up was spent with a drunken man who searched the face of every passing girl in Paris. He spent ten years dying of a broken heart. And your mother? Did you never see her again? Yes. Yes, I saw her. She had become a woman of the streets. And it was in the streets that she died. And they must be in Mr. Slade's room. Lily. Excuse me, Mr. Slade. Inspector Warwick is here to see Lily. I forgot. I, on the other hand, did not forget, and here I am. Mr. Slade? We're going to the Black Museum at Scotland Yard. Would you like to come along? Is it all right if Mr. Slade comes with us? Oh, I don't believe Mr. Slade would really enjoy himself. Do come. Yes. Yes, I believe I'd like to come. I'll be just a moment. Hello again. Now, Mrs. Harley here. If she looks familiar, she should, uh, being played by Frances Bavier. Yes, that is our beloved Aunt B from The Andy Griffith Show. And she was also in a spin-off series from that. Uh, she also still played the role of Aunt B in Mayberry RFD, uh, again, which was a spin-off series from The Andy Griffith Show. And until watching this picture, I had never seen Frances Bavier in any other role than as Aunt B. But I do have to say, um, these scenes inside the house, I am in love with and I am a sucker for Victorian era houses. And, you know, just, you know, <sighs> You know, the wraparound front porches, you know, ginger trim up along the roof, you know, the gables, the widow's peaks, the bay windows, it, and inside the house, you, you know, just all of that nice woodwork, you know, the door trim, stairway banisters. That is my dream someday is to own a Queen Anne Victorian house. You know, that's half the fun of watching this picture. Now, the dog that we see in this picture, and I can look at it, I can tell, it's a sable and white Lassie-type collie. 
And I'll tell you, watching this, I had a dog just like this one. Uh, when I was a kid, growing up in Marion County, we lived out in the, kind of out in the boonies, and uh, that was kind of our farm dog. Uh, his name was Socko. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just watching Adams, hey, that looks just like Socko, you know? <laughs> yeah, had a dog just like this one. But uh, Mr. Slade here, and he's being played by Jack Palance. Very odd man, you know, even kind of creepy, you know, going around through the house, you know, turning over the pictures you know, in, in his room. Uh, and then you got, on the opposite side of that, you got Lily uh, being played by Constance Smith. Very, very easy on the eyes. And it was certainly a treasure watching her in that song and dance number. Uh, that song she was singing, it was called You're In Love. That song was really being sung by her during the movie. I wanted to point that out because, you know, a lot of times when you watch these Hollywood movies and there's a scene where the actor has a singing scene, they will often hire a professional singer to sing it and they just overdub the voice, you know, doing kind of a lip sync thing. But no, this was really sung and danced by Constance Smith. Now, Mrs. Harley here, she's starting to let her imagination kind of run away with her and is beginning to have her suspicions that Mr. Slade is the Ripper. Well, is she right or wrong? Well, let's get back to Man in the Attic. And these are the death masks of various murderers. That one was publicly hanged outside Newgate Prison six months ago. You can see the rope marks on the neck. You treat them like trophies, like a stuffed elk head mounted over the fireplace. Yes, a little. But these were more dangerous than an elk. Man, unfortunately, is the most dangerous of all beasts. Man is not beast. Murderers are beasts. There are the ropes that were actually used to hang these men. To me, it's the noose that's the wickedest looking. It hangs so calmly, making a graceful loop neatly tied. A simple design by which a man's breath is caught and forfeited for his crime. I'm afraid I'm making Mr. Slade a little queasy if you'd prefer to wait for us outside. It's not the rope. It's your policeman's philosophy, Inspector Warwick. Perhaps I'm too used to murder. I must seem callous. Miss Bonner, I have a question to ask you. Just one? I have dozens to ask you. You too? Yes. For instance, what was that used for? Oh, that was used in the Tufnell Park murder. And would you come Friday for tea at my home? I'd like some friends to meet you. Hmm, I see. What was that used for, Inspector Warry? Well, that is a poker with which some poor chap beat his sweetheart to death. Why did he do it? We never found out exactly. But my belief at this moment is that she failed to answer some perfectly simple question like, will you come to tea? <laughs> Very well, Inspector. I'll come. That table is expressly reserved for one murderer. The Ripper? Those are pictures of the five victims. Ah, there you are, Paul. I wanted to pay my compliments to our distinguished and beautiful visitor. May I present Chief Inspector Melville, Miss Bonner. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Bonner? And Mr. Slade. Mr. Slade? I've been to the palace, Miss Bonner, where I heard Prince Edward say the most complimentary things about you. I thank you. Also, I was told that Her Majesty has decided that the Ripper can't possibly be an Englishman. Now, I suppose we shall have to investigate all foreigners. Not long ago, we were to investigate all bachelors because it couldn't possibly be a married man. Has Paul told you that he's our expert on Jack the Ripper? He even claims to be able to predict the time of each murder. There is a strange periodicity to the Ripper's crimes. It's as if the need to kill surges inside of him up to a peak, is satisfied, and then is quiet until the compulsion slowly builds up again to another climax. When do you expect another? Two days ago. He's broken the pattern now. Usually it's every five or six days. It could come any time. Perhaps he's sated. Sated? If you're ready to go, Miss Bonner, I would be delighted to take you home. Oh, not yet. Then I hope you will forgive me if I go on. I have seen 
All I care to see of Inspector Wardick's little museum. Inspector Melville. Inspector Wardick. Your police methods will never trap the one you call Jack the Ripper. You may be right about the periodicity, but I doubt if the beast you describe can be sated. He must do his work again. Good afternoon. Them fellas and horses have a real cushy job of it, all right, huh? All right. Five thousand of us. We ought to lay our hands on that fella pretty soon. Aye, soon. And I hope it's me what does it. To make up for, you know. Oh, wish, man. Wish her. It wasn't your fault that poor Katie got murdered. How could you know that she didn't live where she said she did? Aye, that's all very well. Oh, for the love of Mike, will you cheer up? You're depressing the life out of me. It's an Irish voice, I tell you. It staked me soul on it. Uh, I suppose you wouldn't consider it'll drop us something to uh, help guard ourselves against the cool of the night? Come along, man. Thank Good night, you. Mary. Sure, Come again, Mary. Oh, good evening, sirs. Evening. Good evening. It's like a breath of home to hear you, miss. Oh, you're an Irishman. Well, there's no denying that. Well, no. Would you be averse to walking a girl to her home? Oh, I'd like nothing better, miss. Are oh, you very kind? I've only just come to London to seek me fortune on the stage. And mayhap we'll get there if I don't have to be walking home alone at night. Well, you'll not be walking home alone on my beat, Mr... Lenahan. Mary Lenahan. Ah, it is the breath of home to hear you, Miss Lenahan. Uh, would it be asking too much to hear you sing again? I heard very little of that song in the pub back. Well, sure I will. There's a dear little plan that grows in our isle. Twas St. Patrick himself, sure, that said it. And the sun on his labor with pleasure did smile. And with dew from his eye, often wetted. It shines through the bog, through the break, through the mile and he called it the dear little shamrock of Ireland the dear little shamrock the sweet little shamrock the dear little sweet little shamrock of Ireland me thanks to you, gentlemen. Good night, sir. Good night. It was our pleasure, Miss Linehan. And good luck to you. Thanks. She has a sweet voice, but we have our duty. Come on, lad.
How long ago? We just left her only a few moments. Did anyone come out of here? We saw no one, sir. Then he might still be in the building. Put a cordon around this block. Search all these buildings. Get out of this if he's human. I'm afraid he isn't human, sir. Not and do what he did to that girl. Burning my ulster. Don't come too close. Those. What are those stains? They look like blood. I was carrying a solution in a glass container. I, part of my experiment, I fell and it broke. My ulster became contaminated. I, I must be quick, drastic. The contamination could easily spread. Contamination? You mean it may carry a disease? Yes. to the dog. I'm afraid I heard him. He jumped up to greet me. I didn't want him to touch the ulster. Dogs can carry human disease. There, it's done. You were right about the Ripper. You were probably busy and didn't hear. Hear what? There was another Ripper murdered tonight. You said he would do it. How did you know? I didn't know. Your inspector Warwick made me angry. I don't know why I said it. What is it? Everyone distrusts me. I feel it, even you. I work very hard. I do what I must do. I, I am myself. I don't distrust you. Forgive me, I'm, I'm very tired. Is there anything I can do for you? We must each live with ourselves. Yes. What's happened? What's that smell? Anything wrong? No, Uncle. I'm sorry. I, I had to use the stove. Hmm. 
All this writing about investigations and not a single clue yet. William, we must go to the police. What for? I don't believe Mr. Slade burned his ulster because it was contaminated. He wanted to get rid of those blood spots. Well, uh, Lily said she believed him. I'm sorry. Hmm? What's the matter? Well, here's his breakfast tray. But I don't want to take it. I don't know what to think of him. I'll take the tray and settle this business once and for all. William. William. Don't do anything silly. I never do anything silly. Great heavens, man. Don't you ever sleep? This experiment is very difficult. Any more danger of that contamination? I think not. You are suspicious, too. Well, I am a pathologist, Mr. Harley, and I am working on blood diseases. You can check on my work at the University Hospital. Hmm. Of course. Of course. Did you come to ask me to move away? It, it has happened before. Move away? No, sir, certainly not. You're perfectly welcome here, and I'll see to it that you stay welcome. Uh, now then, you, you'd better eat some breakfast, what? Thank you. Eat hearty. Come in. Oh, do come in, Mr. Slade. I came to thank you for your reminder. The theater. Oh, yes. I will come tonight. Splendid. I'm so happy. I think it will do you a lot of good to forget work for a while and really enjoy yourself. I believe there's some tea. I suppose you take off your ulster and stay a minute. I'm not disturbing you. No, of course not. I was merely writing a few thank you notes for flowers. Most particularly to Inspector Warwick? I should be able to thank him in person. He's coming tonight, too. You don't like Inspector Warwick, do you? He thinks you are a most interesting man. He asked me all sorts of questions about you. Wait here, Bates. Yes, may I help you? I wish to inquire if you have a Dr. Slade in your hospital. Dr. Slade? No, we do not. Thank you. We have a Mr. Slade who works in research. He's a pathologist. Do you wish to see him? No, not immediately, thank you. Just as well, he isn't here. Have you seen him recently? As recently as last night. Is he here very much? Almost every day and night. He works late quite often. He's a most respected member of our staff. Good evening, Daisy. Oh, good evening, Inspector Warwick. Am I too early? Oh, I think Miss Lily will be down in a minute. Will you sit in there, sir? <laughs> What's the trouble, Daisy? Oh, I don't know. I'm as jumpy as a cat. What's the matter? Well, it's the back and forth and back and forth. Back and forth? Well, first Mrs. Harley says he's the Ripper himself, and then Mr. Harley proves it's all nonsense. What do you mean? Well, first he burns his black bag, and then Mr. Harley poo-poos that, and shows us his own hidden in the chest. And then he burns his ulster, which had all the blood on it. Daisy, wait a moment. What are you talking about? Well, Mr. Slade. Oh, it's all mixed up. 
And I'm not supposed to say. Mr. Arley says it's just woman's hysteria. Wait a minute. Good evening, Inspector Warwick. Good evening, sir. You've come for Lily? Yes. <laughs> Perhaps a nip of sherry will help us pass the time. Mr. Harley, what is this about Slade? Helen's been at you, has she? Well, no, as a matter of fact, Daisy mentioned it. Look here, old man. Everything about Slade can be logically explained. Except one thing. The dog's suddenly gone sour on him. Still, that doesn't prove anything, does it? You'd better tell me about it, Mr. Harley. I tell you this, Lily, no matter what you say, I don't believe you ought to spend too much time alone with him. Aunt Helen, dear sweet Aunt Helen, what if I were to tell you that it was Mr. Slade who was in danger? Not I. Why, Lily! I think this thing can be settled tonight. This is a copy of a thumbprint the Ripper left in the room of Mary Lenahan, the last victim. Thumbprint? There's a theory that there are no two fingerprints in the world that are exactly alike. I happen to subscribe to it. Hmm. Could you get me something that Slade has held in his right hand, a glass or something? Well, frankly, I, I don't know. Mr. Harley, wouldn't you feel more secure if we cleared it up? Yes, I suppose so. Uh, fact is, the fellow's gone out. We, we might try looking about his room. That would be fine. I rather hate to, you know, prying into a man's belongings. Mr. Harley. Yes. <laughs> Helen tells me Mr. Slade frequently reads the Bible. Murderers don't read Bibles, do they? There might be some prints here. I'd like to take something smaller, something you wouldn't immediately miss. Oh, this will do. Now, something more. Locked in. I say, should you do that, old man? The policeman never knows what he should do until it's proved to be the right thing. Oh, this probably has both prints. Handkerchief. I say, uh... I'll bring it back. And your handkerchief. <laughs> don't pass on that. Gentlemen don't mind waiting for ladies. They're quite used to it. What do we do? Shh. Do you have everything, dear? Yes, I Stop worrying. Well, I can't help it. There's something in the air tonight. She's feeling things again. I thought Mrs. Slade had gone out. There's a light in here. What is this? I'm sorry, Miss Bonner. You've been snooping through Mr. Slade's things. Very well. There's been a mystery about this gentleman, and I wish to clear it up once and for all. I'm quite tired of this. Why don't you leave the poor man alone? He went out early to avoid meeting you. Oh? Where did he go? He'll be at the theater later to see me. Perhaps you can hang him there. I merely want to ask some questions. What did you find of his? I found this. That's his mother. His mother? Of course. He told me about her. Poor woman, she died an alcoholic in the slums of Whitechapel. What else did he tell you? He seemed quite confused about his feelings for love and resentment all mixed up together. Please, Paul, leave the poor man alone. You defend him with quite a lot of spirit, Miss Barner. Well, I know him better than any of you. I, I like him. I feel sorry for him. As a friend, I should like to respect your fondness for Mr. Slade. But I am also a policeman. You most certainly are. You needn't bother to take me to the theater tonight. Good night, Inspector. If I may say so, sir, and I if think... I said you may not say it, then I wouldn't, sir. If I may ask, sir, Bates, if it seems to you I'm in a nasty mood tonight, you're right, and I have cause. 
No, you may not ask. You may not say so. You may do absolutely nothing except breathe quietly. Yes, sir. Are you tired of life? Are you bored with your wife? Is he laugh really out of the question? We? Oui? Then I take you with me, and we go to Paris. Hmm. And I think I make just one suggestion. Come and do the new Parisian track. In Paris, they do the track the lot. You'll be shocked by such an uppy step Much too gay and frisky And it's risky for your rep Mutation It's exciting, ooh la 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 I'm inviting you, la 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 To let me show you everything you want to know You zap and then you zip Then you steal a little key Come on, who dares? Your cares will be forgotten if you learn to do the new Parisian talk. Nothing matches. And every print of his right hand is here. It's not Slade, that's all. Sir, this print couldn't have been made by the Ripper's left hand. Not unless every detective at the yard is wrong. That's most unlikely, isn't it, sir? And the victim's cut showed that the Ripper used his knife from right to left across the throat while attacking from behind. That means he used his left hand. He took his victims like this. The cut of the knife was like this. Sir, have you observed Mr. Slade to be left-handed? No, I haven't. But he could still use his left hand if he attacked from behind. You know, for the first time, it occurs to me that the Ripper need not have attacked from behind. In which case, he could make the same cut from the front with his right hand. Yes, sir. If that's so, we must find a left thumbprint to match the print of the Ripper's. About that portrait, sir. I have a peculiar memory for faces. You do? Yes, sir. I believe that to be the face of Anne Lawrence. Even in the mole on the left cheek. Bates, you're right. Slade's mother was the first Ripper victim. To let me show you everything you ought to know You zap and then you zip, then you steal a little kiss Come on Where is Slade? Have you seen him? Yes, he's right down there He's gone They liked it, didn't they? They were 
shipped you. Excuse me. Am I under arrest, Mr. Policeman? Where is Slade? Inspector Warwick, I'm very sick of all this. He's the Ripper. Do go away. You're out of your mind. Leela, I don't want you to let anyone in. There's a gentleman in here, Miss Lily. Hello. May I talk to you alone? I have to make a change. There isn't much time. All right, Gila. Please. Well, how did you like the show? You are exquisite, Lily. Good. For a moment, I thought you disliked the whole thing. You look so glum. I hated it. I hated your beauty being exposed for everyone to ogle. I hated the looks on men's faces. Well, without those looks on their faces, I, I'd be finished. You're more wonderful, more... more sweetly beautiful than anyone I've ever known. Everything in my life has changed because of you. Help me. Help me. <laughs> the strangest moments. I need you, Lily. Only you can save me. Save you? Come away with me right now. Come away with me anywhere in the world you say. I want to live close to you without sharing you. Close. Close. I think there's something you should understand. I'm fond of you, but I'm not ready to be taken over. I like a man with passion. But I don't want a slave, and, and I don't want to be one. Besides, I wouldn't dream of giving up the theater. All I've said makes no difference to you. I, I didn't say that. Exciting men to want to kill. The one using your beauty to corrupt, to degrade. Please. You're mocking me! Miss Lily? Same as my mother. Miss Lily? Same as all of them. Miss Lily, are you all right? Mocking love, living for lust. You are evil. Your beauty is evil. It must be cut away. Just did you love me? Get a doctor.
doctor. Take care of my horses. I must hurry. Where is he? You mean the doctor? He turned the corner too fast and crashed the wheel. Quickly, man. That was the river. dark and it's too deep. We'll never get him now. Not so dark and not so deep is where he's going. Welcome back. Now, you know, I think that these were some very risque type of stage shows for Victorian era London. You know, kind of hard to picture that, you know, a show like this would have really been done in a time that was so prim and proper as Victorian era London. But uh, the picture here, uh, while correct in the broad stroke, like most Hollywood movies, it did take a few liberties with some of the small details about the Jack the Ripper killings. And one thing uh, about it is the murder was never found and it was never solved. So to this day, no one really knows to a certainty who Jack the Ripper was. Uh, there was never a suspect by the name of Mr. Slade. Um, another thing uh, it got wrong was the Count. Uh, in the movie, it referred to the last victim uh, as being th the sixth victim. In truth, there were five. Uh, they are called the Canonical Five. Uh, five victims who were known to a certainty that the commonalities of them were from Jack the Ripper, okay? The last victim uh, in real life was an Irish immigrant, but her name was Mary Kelly. In the picture here, her name was changed to Mary Lenahan. So just a small twist with the last name. Now, and one other thing that the film did not mention here is there are five known victims that you can call the Jack the Ripper killings. 
But after those, there were another six murders that followed that had some common elements, but not all. So in truth, the Jack the Ripper killings, the number could actually go as high as 11. And another one, at the time of the killings, Jack the Ripper wasn't called Jack the Ripper yet. In the newspaper accounts, contemporary to the time, he was referred to as the Whitechapel murderer or as the Lead Apron. It wasn't until a letter was sent to the press uh, by someone claiming to be the killer and he had signed it Jack the Ripper. Now, for a number of reasons, that letter is believed to have largely believed to have been a hoax. So they don't think it really was from the killer, but the name Jack the Ripper stuck. And that is how he has been referred to ever since. And, you know, as I was looking for films like, like you know, a non-traditional noir to bring you, this one in particular caught my eye because of a time when I was a kid. Um, I remember it was Halloween of 1974. I entered a costume contest that was sponsored by a department store up in Marion, my hometown. They had sponsored this costume contest and I won an honorable mention. My costume was Jack the Ripper. Now remember, if you like tonight's picture, you want to see more like it, click on the subscribe button down here. You'll be notified of future releases up here in the notification bell. And you can always just type Full Moon Matinee in the search bar up here and you can find all of the prior releases. And as always, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time.